Hey guys, Cameron here with Brain Tickle, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the testing that I implemented for my compiler. So I think the first, the most important thing to do was, is to go over this uh, file structure that I've built. And it'll kind of give you the idea of why I implemented stuff the way that I did in my make file. So in this file structure, we have obviously the source file with my C files. But then in the test cases folder, I have a subdirectory for the lexer and the lexer main.c. So in the lexer folder, we have an answer file and then we have a five file. And so I actually, uh, since the last video, I actually ended up renaming the compiler to phi um, for various, various reasons. And uh, in this answer file, we have what the compiler is supposed to output for the lexer. So when the lexer runs, it's supposed to output this and give it, given this. So in this lexer main, what it does is it goes through, it lexes it, and once it lexes it, it goes through all the tokens that the lexers generated and prints them out. And so in this fast script that we'll get to later, it compares um, the expected output, which is this, with the actual output using like a diff command. But first, I kind of want to show you the make file because this is where some of the magic happens first. Here in this test rule, it takes in, it dynamically puts in a test rule so I can do make test lexer. But if I had, um, if I had a parser subdirectory and a parser dash main dot C file, then I would be able to do make test uh, dash lexer or make test dash parser and it would work um, and that's kind of the, one of the reasons that I wanted to make test cases like this so it's like super dynamic and it this even takes in um, whatever this percent sign is so this is it just passes in the word lexer uh, to the bash script and so this is really cool it compiles the, all of these C files and uh, what it actually the special thing that it does is it takes all these C files but then it excludes um, excludes main.c or main.o when it gets converted to an object file. And it excludes that because we want to use this lexer main.c because we don't want the actual like main of the compiler. We want the main that's going to produce the lexer output and the lexer output only. So I did that so that I could test each part of the compiler individually. So I added some things, cleaning up the test cases, and everything it's um pretty pretty cool and that's like some of the magic but the coolest part for me was writing this bash script um i really started to like writing bash it's like coding with a terrible syntax but it was kind of fun um and one of the cool things that i was able to do is i was able to multi-thread uh running the compiler through all the test cases so i it, this kind of looks weird here but what I'm doing is I have a variable for the compiler which is it's in the binary directory the bin and we pass in the file which is the this phi file right here and then we output it to a dot out file in this in here as well and so then we're able to multi-thread it we add the PID because of the multi-threading we add a file name um, what it does is it takes in the file name, which is this is one dot phi, but what this does is it strips that so it's just uh, one, and we use that so it's like one dot out, and same thing here we just put in uh, the string one, so then we're able to use the name of the file because I know that all I know all the extensions like um, what they will be, so then after we've gone through and. Uh, tried to compile all of these files and outputted them to a uh, log file. We then go through all the PIDs, we wait on them, and see if they return a non-zero return value, which would mean a compile error. And so then we add them to this list of errors, error files, and we don't do anything with it right yet. Um, we do print out like a summary thing, and so this is going to start, we're going to start going through all of the files and comparing them. But first, I want to output all the things that actually ended up in a compiler error. Because we're not going to compare those files with the output because it didn't output anything. It's just an error. So doing that, 
we just see if um, if there's actually some comp some errors in any of the files, and if there is, then we output them. We tell them how many, and we output which one right here. So I added some formatting here and there. Um, kind of cool. I tell them to look at the the log file, to look at the compile error, and then I move on because even though we had an error with some of the files, we may have passed some other test cases or gotten an incorrect answer. And so I go through all of the files, and if if the file name is in the error files name, then I don't compare it because like I said before, there's no reason to compare it if it had a compile error because it didn't produce anything or maybe maybe it did, but it's not really what we want. A compile error is a little more diff difficult to fix depending on how you look at it. So we, we ignore that and then actually for the files that we do want to check, we use a diff command. So I'm using a diff command right here and we're outputting um, what we want to the diff. So we're comparing the out file and the answer file. And if there's a difference, um, then we add it to the failed file's name. But if there is not a difference, then we remove the diff because it's an empty file. And then we increase the past count number. And so after that, we just print out the summary. If there's any failed file names, then we print them out just like we did to the errors. And if there's no error file names and no failed file names then we print all test cases passed and if there is some then we only print the number of test cases that passed so I'm going to show you right here if we do the selector and so I've actually pre I've actually changed some stuff in the lexer main so that it didn't pass so I could show you but if I add back um because what what was the difference is I'm expecting toke type with this little parentheses around the int, but I've given it just toke type. And so that the reason is because I've added, I didn't add the token.type equals equals toke number. So I'm going to add that now. Okay, and so now we're going to try again. And there we go. All the test cases passed. And so this is kind of just showing you how it, it actually brings up some of the test cases that don't pass. And if they all pass, then it tells you that all of them passed. So I'm really excited that I was able to get this to work. Um, if you want to add any more test cases to this Lexer, let's say I've only added seven test cases. So feel free to make a pull request, add more test cases, or try to even break it with a pull request of test cases that do break it. I'd really appreciate that so I can continue to improve this compiler. Um, and also I'm gonna start working on parser test cases to test the parser right there that you can see, but I haven't shown you because I have not finished that. So thanks for your time and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.